sitting down with all of you today, but you guys, you're the first three I have the pleasure of chatting with. So talk to me, Secrets and Sisterhood. How did this show come about? So you're, I'm number eight. This is number nine, and that's number 10, the baby of the family. We really wanted to showcase our our family story. Our parents are refugees from Afghanistan. Half the sisters were born in Afghanistan. The rest of us were born here. And there's a very big dynamic between the elder and the younger sisters, the elders being the elders and us being the wolf pack. And my, my mom was really big on education and being a successful woman and not just relying on, on men to like, you know, lead you forward. And so we really wanted to show that story that, you know, social media is really big right now. Everyone wants to be a model or an influencer or an athlete. And we kind of want to stick to, you know, it's okay to have a strong education forefront. It's okay to still have those core family values and to share that story with the melting pot that is America. Are you guys shocked? Because, you know, you hear 10 sisters, you're like, obviously, and I've watched the show, you know, there's always something going on with one of you. So, of course, this should be a reality show on Hulu. Like, where did this idea come from? Have you guys been saying for years you should have a, a reality show? I mean, 10 sisters is quite a bit. I mean, if I had a nickel for every time we were told that we should have our own show, I would be a rich woman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and this journey did start about 10 years ago. We kind of dibbled and dabbled in doing reality TV and docu-series because every time we met someone, it was like, oh, you're so-and-so. No, that's my sister. And then growing up in school, it was like, well, didn't you graduate? Wait, you got held back? I'm like, no, that was my sister. So kind of our entire lives, we were always just like, you know, everyone's like, get a show, show, show your story. It's so inspiring. Is there someone who was more hesitant? You know, I mean, it's a great show. Like, was there a sister that kind of held out that said, you know, I don't know if the cameras are for me? Um, there was some reservation from the older sisters just because they were more concerned about, you know, what the world think, you know, because they have a different mentality than we do. So definitely reservation from the elder sisters. What about you, Hamida? I mean, you are number 10. You're the baby of the bunch. Like, what was it like growing up, you know, with nine older sisters and being the youngest? It was a blessing. It was amazing. I had nine role models to look up to and had so many best friends growing up. So definitely a blessing. And Nuria, you know, we've learned, I think it was in one of the first episodes, one of the sisters said, you know, you were the most temperamental, you know, is that, is that true? Is that a title that's well-deserved? Uh, it is not entirely true. Um, I think if you poke a bear, eventually it's gonna growl back <laughs> and that's what happens. So they're just speaking more to the reaction, not so much all of the poking they're doing before I react. <laughs> Well, you guys mentioned elders and you are the wolf pack. Like who came up with the wolf pack? Like where did these titles come from? The elders and the world wolf pack. So it's interesting. Shakur and I have this ongoing lifelong argument of who created the wolf pack. Um, she claims to be the leader of the wolf pack. Um, when we were younger, we were always just rolling together. We had a very tight knit, big bunch. And Every time we'd go out, we'd always howl. <laughs> and we were like, hey, we're a wolf pack. And there's this saying, and it says, you know, for the strength of the pack of, is the wolf, and the strength of the wolf is the pack. I knew you were going to say that. I know. I knew and it. so <laughs> that's how we literally feel, like a, like a wolf pack. And we'll come for anyone who comes for us. <laughs> I love it. When and you mentioned, elders, yes, go on. And the elders are the elders, because when you think of someone that's older in our family, there's respect. You're conservative. You're born back home in Afghanistan. So it's kind of like, oh, you're an elder. And usually wiser. Yeah, wiser too. So there's not there's not a negative connotation to it. It's actually a respect thing. Do they feel it's a respect thing as well? Or do they say, please don't I, call us the elders? <laughs> I think Ravia hates being called an elder. Um, <laughs> but we say it out of love. Yeah. <laughs> You say it out of love. Well, you know, speaking of Afghanistan, you know, you are Muslim American. Like how important was that, you know, in getting this made and like showing representation on TV? It was difficult at first just because we didn't know how other people were going to perceive it. But we were born in America. This is all we know, born and raised here. And we're just showing our own personal journeys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're not what? trying to represent all Muslims or all Afghan women. 
or just simply telling our personal story. Was there pushback like from people, you know, either in your family who are not on the show, like the community, like did people say, you know, we don't want this on a reality show or was it all just positive and go out you there? Will see, you will see some uh, throughout the season, you will see some sisters reactions and their facial expressions with certain things that we say. So you can definitely tell, you know, their, um, their resistance to our behavior. Yes. But we always have, and if you watch the show, you'll see our, the work we do to help Afghanistan, the charity, the gala, because we do want to give back. Our eldest sister, Shasta, came here when she was a teenager. So she had to learn how to speak English. She had to learn the laws of the land when she came to America. So we grew up very Afghan. Honestly, I didn't know I was born in America until I was like 10 years old. <laughs> <laughs> Our first language is in English. It's Pashto. So we thought we were like, oh, we're Afghan. Like, oh, we're Afghan-American, actually. Well, especially because mom would cut our hair till we were, I don't know how old. We all had the same bowl haircut. <laughs> And she would make our clothes. So we wore homemade clothes to school. And we ate with our hands. We slept on the floor. I mean, this is America, but we grew up like we were in Afghanistan. So who, I mean, we didn't know until we were older. (laughs) Wow. Well, you know, it is great. I'm glad that this ended up on Hulu. You know, speaking of Hulu, we have another show on Hulu called The Kardashians. You know, I'm sure I'm not the first person. You're going to be doing lots of press during the day today. I'm sure I'm not the only one that is making this comparison. Like, did you guys watch The Kardashians? Are you reality TV fans in general? You know, um, growing up, my mom had a very strict regimen. We all graduated high school at 16. We all graduated university at 19. We have multiple degrees and all of, a lot of our focus was on just education. We had no male figures. Our father was murdered. We had no uncles, no cousins, no grandparents. So our entire life was sort of like get an education, don't watch TV, be something and rely on yourself. So we don't watch too much reality TV. Some of my sisters do. They like selling sunset. Some of the girls love of the housewives. Yeah, I know Khadija loves her housewives. Yes. I think Muslifa does too. I've seen a couple of episodes. Yeah. I'm not sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll indulge in it here and there if I and I find it pretty funny. So, yeah. But we're all about women empowerment. We love seeing other women win and everyone has their own unique story and we love to hear all of them. What do you want people to take away as they watch this, like about your culture? What do you think is like some of the biggest misconceptions about your culture and that you hope people kind of learn from watching these first 10 installments? I think it's just so important just to speak your truth and just be your authentic self. And people, when you think of Afghanistan, they think of war, terror, um, a heavy re- Islamic regime, and they see women in burqa. And so, when people find out that you're from Afghan, your parents are from Afghanistan, like, oh, we never knew Afghan women look like this, or you know, they're so Americanized, or they have any rights and aren't oppressed and are successful women. And we really want to erase that stigma that is on Afghanistan and the women that are raised here. Wow, that's great. How, before we wrap up, how is your mom? I mean, I know the show just came out. Like, have you started hearing from people that you haven't heard from? I know it's early in the day. Like, how is your mom in this process? Has she ready for possible newfound stardom? Our mom, so my mom actually is back home right now. She's been there for a long time. She's visiting her sister's family. And we talked to her on the phone. And my mom probably had the most anxiety filming this. English is not her first language. She's very shy. When she speaks, it's like the word of God. She's very like, everyone don't speak when she's speaking. She's very wise. Very wise. And she was really nervous. And, you know, being raised and born and lived half her life in Afghanistan with her children, she's not really one to speak up because the culture there is very different. Women don't have that right. So for her to get the floor and the attention, she was like really honored. And she 